Hello, hello, hello. Let's get the music on. There we go. There we go. Hello there. My name is Pipkin Baba. And today we return. The Kataba Shoujo. Welcome back. If you're new here, to catch you up to speed, uh, in our last episode, we uh, had a a heart. Would the term be palpitation? We had an issue with our heart. Oh, I think the audio is doubled. Oh yeah, the music's doubled. Okay, there we go. Uh, our main character, Nakai, had a heart issue and had to go to the hospital for a couple of months and is now being enrolled in a school for children with disabilities. And we met a few different characters. A few different characters. We haven't... I don't... I, I don't believe we've been set on anybody's route specifically yet. But we... we have met some characters. Not all of them. Not all of them. Um... We met Hanako, who is a girl that has a bunch of burns on her face. We met Lily, who is a blind girl that likes to drink tea. Uh, we met... Uh, Shizune, who is deaf, and we met her interpreter, Misha, who has the pink and real hair. Any preference yet? Uh, I feel like I like Lily most. I think I like Lily most. I saw... After the fact that there was somebody posting that was claiming to be a dev. Unfortunately, I do not remember their name right now, but... They answered the question of what Misha's disability was, and... They said she doesn't have one, which makes me... which makes me curious. Maybe we can... maybe we can... ask them a few questions. I'll have to look them up. PK Scratch, thank you! Even if Pippa was late because she hates us, you can have Pippa that loves you like pizza by paying $20 for her Valentine voice pack on sale now. That's right, there's one day left for the Valentine's merchandise. Go on over to shop.phase-connect.com. Weird, thank you. I dare you to react to a Maxar vid without pausing. I think that would overload my brain. Oh, and we also met Kenji, who is the uh the neat boy that lives across the hall from us pixie misa thank you first time viewer are any of these girls secretly pigeons unfortunately not hey, oh you thank you are oh you thank you this game was made me date a blind girl she was awesome rip amaya hit by a drunk driver in 2016. Bron i'm sorry to hear that uh brony simpson thank you hey Pippa, did you hear about family dollar being fined 40 million for hanging over a thousand rats in their arkansas warehouse oh for having over a Holy shit. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of rats. <laughs> Not as many as I have. <laughs> the highly integral, thank you. Hello, Pippa. Tomorrow's my birth, miss, but you're not streaming then. I I have my re a regular old school RuneScape stream, still. Hope your day is good. I have root beer flavored milk and carrot cake. I'm an old man now. Happy, happy almost birthday, Harley and Juggalo! Happy birthday to you! I hope you have a wonderful birthday and I hope you enjoy the carrot cake. Pippa sounds eepy. Just trying to keep more of a... a chill tone. Trying to... trying to maintain and set the vibe early. Jinky, thank you. Pippa's live. Let's fucking go. Uh... Ike, thank you. This is the best part of the day. Michael Turk, thank you. Crumble Girl Love, let's go. You know what? Let's go. Let's go. And I have water here. Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, load. I think this one, yeah. Okay, oops. You have to load. Yeah, I have to load. Okay, so we left off on a choice. I don't know why I just opened a new bottle of water. I haven't already opened one right next to me. Fucking thank you. Uh, our joke, joke, joke win. Uh, Hulk win? I can't do much more than this in the current economy, but I still want to show support for my favorite rabbit. I hope it's another fun and comfy stream today. You've inspired me for so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. Any little bit helps. I really, I really appreciate it all. I... I'm, I'm very, I'm very hoping... Uh... Your guys' super chats might be good, put to good use soon. Hopefully. I... Found a house I really... Really, really love. 
And I'm really, I'm really hoping everything works out for it, but... There's so many moving parts to... Trying to get a place, you know? Dina Moose, thank you. I'm sorry, but whenever someone says the protagonist's name, I can't help but think of Nakai the Wanderer from... The Wanderer from Warhammer Fantasy. I'm not familiar. Oh! Okay, uh, wait for Shizne and Misha to come to a decision. Go talk with Hanako. I'll read a book. So the context was for this. Hanako is sitting on her lonesome. And we can go interact with her. I got the super list. So feel free to catch up in between dialogue during choices. Thank you, thank you, Arcat Bro. Appreciate the service. Ronson, thank you. And Backslash, thank you. Wishing you the best of luck with the house hunt. Thank you, thank you. Yo, I, I, we already called Hanako cute. So if we continue to be friendly with her, we might end up on her route. But one thing with these kinds of games is sometimes like you have to be nice to everybody in order to unlock certain girls routes. And I feel like I want to try and go for Lily's route. I don't really know how to get on her route, but I feel like she'd want us to be nice to other girls, right? I feel like, I feel like she'd want us to get along with everybody. She kind of gives me that, like, mature, uh, friendly vibe. Like the pirate, thank you. She said my name! Eric of Blaze, thank you. Clam, kid, slammer. Making his best, Pippa. So, let's go talk with Hanako. Oh. I just realized I don't have my thing set. Oh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay, there we go. Oops. Wait. <laughs> I accidentally hit the wrong button. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Da -da -da. Puggles! I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. Oh shoot, wait, what voice did we do for her? I don't remember. I don't remember. Ah. Um, I think she had like a more quiet, shy voice, right? Imsil, thank you. Oh, wait, I'm not reading some. Soft, shy voice, right, right. Hey, <laughs> Sal. Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and I thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from up close. That's okay. It, it was my fault. Nah, that wasn't any. Oh, nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just kind of happened. So, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Y yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily, the blind girl? Monica only nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disabilities is a faux pas of the worst kind or just normal here. I guess it explains. I guess it explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I think I'm making her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. No, that's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, because it's hard to get around the classroom? Not really. Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder and towards Shizuna. Shizuna? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly, this isn't something she wants to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense. She's an A and Lily not getting along well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. 
It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha, even when you can see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so fo focused on Shizune that I am the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily. Okay, let's see if I can do this again. Ah, <laughs> oh, Hanako. Good morning. Is the president here? Y yes Hanako glances over her shoulder at Shizne again, as if to confirm she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some sort of enmity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, then they'd tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that this school has little feuds, just like my old high school. Even if people are more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey, Lily, how are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that Hiso? I didn't realize you were here. It, seemed that Lil it seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry, Lily. I thought you realized. Just pause. No, it's alright, Hanako. Hiso, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so, I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you are feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily? Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hisa, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, and then she freezes, wide-eyed. Sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easily if she saw how scared Hanukkah looks, but it can't be helped now. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So, we leave, all three together. Lily walks beside the wall. Beside the wall. Letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then, Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she is practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must make her walking that much harder, Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a stream steam train. Hanako shrieks a little and my vision briefly goes black. Ouch. What the f Chat, new girl? Here we go, best girl! Best girl, it's her? Best girl, Eric Jimenez, thank you. If you run this game, what would be your story? Uh, I don't know. It's her? Second best, not best. Cute legs. That was best girl. Lemons? Why is everyone posting lemons? Why is everyone posting lemons? Is this Lomi? Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. I see why you guys call their legs. They belong to the perpetrator. A short girl who bumped into me and has now fallen down onto the hallway floor. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during a lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Blade Runner! <laughs> or she does, but they are not flesh and bone. 
Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic-like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Oh god, I don't I don't know what voice to do for this girl. Um Um Hmm. Oh man? Hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about all that. Really? I wasn't looking where I was going. And you just came out of nowhere. Sorry, sorry. She's looking really apologetic in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being ang angry or anything since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Ouch. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest. And I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget your medication. And most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds, dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was. Doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I'm overly worried about my heart. Uh, no need, I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time and take a deep breath. She just knocked the wind right out of me. Big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine. and Nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good. I was... Isa, what happened? She's not quite up to speed for obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than what the current search... More than what the situation deserves, really. Someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious. Just winded. Oh, sorry. It's my fault. I was just going to get some stuff and I was in kind of a hurry. That someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and shuffles her plastic or metallic feet, looking down at them before saying anything. Hi, Hanako. I guess the girls know each other. Do please try to be more careful. You might be sturdy enough to endure these sorts of accidents, but there are people who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. It's so cute, I find myself smiling. I know that. I... I am... Um, I was just... Ah, I gotta go! Teacher will have my head. I promised to help with burnouts, but I went running instead. Sorry, but I've got to change and everything. Before any of us can say a thing, Emmy has already bolted away, leaving the hallway eerily quiet. Does that kind of thing happen often around here? There are more rules in Yamaku than usual for running in corridors. But that rarely stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight, composed smile. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off then? Lily heads off along the hallway and Hanako hurries after her. The route to the room the two use for tea is sim fairly simple to retrace, being still fresh in my mind from yesterday. Lily and Hanako quickly go about the business of making lunch. Before I can even open my small bag of food, Lily's busying herself with her thermos and tea bags as Hanako is setting out both their lunch boxes. So, is this what you meant by coming here almost every day? Yes, Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It suits both of us, so we ended up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reactions to me over the past couple of days, I can understand why that is a boon. 
that and Lily being able to get some quiet away from her class as well. I take my seat last after Lily's poured the tea for us and sits down. A <gasps> CG! We got a CG! Ah! Is this our first unique CG? Maybe? I feel like I feel like this is our first like unique one. Or like we actually made choices to get to it. No? You just get this one for free anyways? There was a version of this without Hanako. Oh? Oh, you always get this one. Dang it! Okay. And... I think for first choice base. It's a freebie. Ah, man! The more time I spend with these two girls, the more I think they're a perfect foil to Misha and Shizune. Even without a voice, Shizune is direct and brash, and Misha seems to get along well with everyone. On the other hand, Lily is soft-spoken and relaxed while Hanako seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring in Yamaku, Hisao? You seemed a bit flustered before. Apart from getting lost every now and again and being crash-tackled outside my classroom, fine, I guess. Yeah, you looked pretty hurt before. Are you really... okay? For a brief moment, I consider telling Hanako and Lily about my condition, but then I hold it back. I can't tell why, but for some reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers, even if they have been pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a bit startled. Judging from the two girls' expressions, I don't think that they're buying it. But in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, they don't press the matter. I guess that is one of the unwritten rules around here. Don't ask. Even if people's conditions are obvious like Hanako's, there's still bound to be a story involved. Everyone has things that they don't feel comfortable speaking about, and I think everyone here recognizes that. So, uh, how long have you been in this school? You both seem to know your way around pretty well. Hmm. Well, I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitories a year ago. Monaco joined at the start of high school as well, and moved to the dormitories when she did, if memory serves me right. That's right. Since high school. So you've known each other since then? Since I moved, yes. Hanako lives next door to me, so it's only natural, right? Right. Yeah, of course. Living next to someone is probably reason enough to befriend them, though I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in that as well. I can't imagine Hanako easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we start to eat our lunch. <laughs> it isn't long before the bells are signaling the end of the break. Like me, the girls pack up their lunches as efficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going to go with Hisao, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me, and for a second I can see that she is considering skipping class, maybe just to avoid walking to the classroom with me. Yes. I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of breaking if looked at in the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous too, but I push the feeling aside, trying to be as natural as I can. We should hurry then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a no nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane, Hanako and I filing out before her. We walk quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reach the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. Isao, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. What the hell is a pain in your so ugly? And with that, we part ways, Lily entering her classroom and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own room. Or to our own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. So... Do you really want to go back to class now? 
Yes. Okay, then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Why are you staring at me like that? Why is he staring at me like that? The teacher looks up at me and opens his mouth to say something. However, as Hanako follows me in and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy partially ignored or practically ignored. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> so. <clears throat> this is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. <laughs> You're so momento, shut up! We make our way to our seats, and I notice that Misha and Shizune are both missing as well. I wonder if it is some new form of informal agreement with the staff, or if it's a perk afforded to the unique students of the school. Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, and the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. When the final bell sounds, I realize that there is still a lot of time left in the day, and I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd. At the hospital, I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here, filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Loud. Is that a bit better? Maybe? I, it's so loud. <laughs> Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Oh. Adjust the SFX button. Another one? How is he getting that loud? I don't know, it's either zero or a hundred. <laughs> Feel the music? Is it that loud? Can't hear a difference at all. How loud is it? Oh my god. <laughs> Music seems fine. Alright, I'm gonna trust you guys. Is it a little loud? It's not that bad? Hold on. There we go. Turn it down a little bit in the volume mixer. Muto is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier. Marking them with a red ball pen. Thank you guys for the help, by the way. That's perfect. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Raising his eyebrows from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nagai? I don't remember what voice I did for him. I jump at him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody else around. Um, nothing. Thinking about what I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts the cap on the pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical, and for a brief moment, I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routined. You have no plans? No, I considered joining a club, but don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I guess. I just... But I don't know how to continue from there. Muto looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about the disabilities. It's like... 
It feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. The teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they may seem at first glance. He says the same thing as Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako, it's not like you can ignore her face. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, hand straight in an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake up the dead from their graves. She starts towards the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed at the interruption and Misha in general, slumps in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong but has no idea what. Yes? We've talked about volume control before. But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So, what is it? I... we need help! We're running out of supplies for the festival stands! This is a distress! She waves a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So, go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? I fucked that up so bad. Now there's like none left there! So do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? She told, I mean, the president thought that the teacher would know if there was a plywood. Was she wrong? Mudo looks like he's in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible. Like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. I'm afraid I have no idea if there is any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Ah, uh, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Nomiya? I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. She holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as it's possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things! There's so much to do and we're falling behind the schedule! Mudo looks at her gravely, and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help? He switches to staring at me focusedly, with a hard expression, as if trying to say, Go make some friends. Mm. Uh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can! Thanks, Hitan! You're really nice! She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelping, Ah! and looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Hitan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun! We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hitan? No, I'm not. Is Hitan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get off the teacher. <laughs> Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating, hesitating a bit. I'm not ESL. I'm like reading too fast in my brain. This is not. 
Shut up, chat. Shut up. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Oh. Still, thanks, Etan. Try to be quick. We are stall building steak right now. Wait, what? Well, try to be quick. We are in a stall building street now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry! She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. <laughs> Steak building streak. <laughs> well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from pink to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's, I heave a sigh. I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to classrooms. Classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side, and 3-4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art is not... I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desk and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels on, in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ha- Something catches my eye, and I stop mid-sentence. Feet. Feet. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired short girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned into silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Now in that another voice chat! Uh... Hello. <laughs> the girl stuffs the forkful into her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um... Hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here for the festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone in here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was expect suspecting my observation was false. Pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. He sound Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. Now I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. 
Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get to your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use then? There's no word for a meal that you eat after lunch but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, and my delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's a very delicious. With much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes, and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. Nah, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop, opening my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Ren cuts me off before I can answer her question or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of the issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be with an overtly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side. Hmm. Are we back? Hello? Hi there! Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure what happened there. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Now my chat's broken on uh, OBS, but that's not the end of the world. Hello, hello, hello. So sorry for the interruption. Looks like internet issues were defeated. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give everybody a moment to come back. We're so back. You scared us there. Yeah, I, that one. Like the issue there. I. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. It was going on for so long. I was starting to think that uh, the internet was just out entirely. But. Were the internet cables tasty? Oh my god. ISP hate. Yeah, random ISP drop. Well. Hopefully the place I move. The internet's a little bit more consistent. <laughs> to the cords. Must be from YouTube. No, because I checked my phone and my phone's internet was out as well. So this time it was not YouTube, actually. Like the pirate thank you, it was the government. Alrighty. As long as it doesn't become recurrent. Yeah, hopefully. Ah, uh, get that fiber. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have fiber where I am now, but next place should be able to get it. My entire YouTube ad broke from that somehow. What the heck? I'm thank you. Something is afoot with your internet. <laughs> alright, alright. I'm gonna take us a water. And we'll jump back into it. Back on noise. Thank you, fifth column is trying to take down the rabbit. This messed up shirt. Oh, wait. Sorry, I don't know if you guys... I don't know when exactly it cut out, so I'm gonna... Go back a little bit. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head. And something in your guts would be more in the ordinary. Like this lunch of mine. And less delicious. 
problem must be in your pants. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back, even physically, as Rin's eyes widened in revelation and astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still partially in shock but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem, arrhythmia. I said it. Or well, like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. Hmm. With little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what was said. This voice cannot stay. <laughs> it's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. Should I have told it as a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hisao, and I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Or maybe this Tezuka girl just had an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms makes her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs even when she eats. The distance and shadows makes it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. Over, I can see how this sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck, I know! <laughs> I meant to hit... <laughs> I meant to hit the mute button! <laughs> I meant to hit the mute button <laughs> when I was sneezed! <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay, back to the game. You saw now you can't just say that. <laughs> I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things. But after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone and this late? Or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors. Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, if she's not horsing around. Horsing. Why is she looking at me like that? I feel self-conscious! Why did she pause for so long? She likes to do sports. Oh. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bits of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double-check it with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, um, so I think I have all the things now. Yeah, she's got that fumo face. 
That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was just about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you are going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping? Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at this good... <laughs> I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hisao. Then you are. <laughs> Ren looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. There's something like a tiny smile there in her face, maybe. I quietly back out of the room. As I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that! Oh no! Uh, somebody asked what I think of Rin. She's pretty interesting. She's pretty interesting. Very unique character type. I like, uh, I like the more... Cool characters. What did she hear? Now I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow, she had gotten to jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about global feminist conspiracy, but I push that thought aside. Shiznay standing slightly behind Misha, aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait! More importantly, who's in there? There's no club meetings today! She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? It took so long that we had to come and check what's wrong! That's no good, Hitan! She... She wags her finger at me, scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you're tardy! Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I got the things here. Was just gonna bring them. I think you were up to some mischief, Eton! Who was in there with you? I wonder... Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. She's an A immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door to the, into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she's experiencing. With She's an A's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders, from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, She's an A just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut turning to sign furiously at Misha. Oh my god, she's such a little... she's such a little busybody. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Hmm. Miss Tezuka! What do you think you were doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such, uh, disgraceful activity! It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune slash Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. 
Shizune taps Misha's shoulder, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Mm. Popularity aside! Please don't do that anymore! Mm. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself, too. <laughs> She's pissed! Ah. We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her reply to Shizna, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. <laughs> Miss Tezuka, please try to take this more seriously! It'll be a disaster if the walls look like someone threw up their lunch onto it! Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't. Not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes some materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duel. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There'll be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. The awkward pauses. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint doesn't fit in my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull cling. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, me and the paint can following since there's little choice for either of us. <laughs> yeah, she needs a hand. <laughs> Get it? Because she doesn't have a hand. <laughs> the hallway is quiet and empty now with Shizune and Misha gone, so we two leave towards the stairwell at the other end. Every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because a thin handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I'm walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Nakai. What a happy coincidence. Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because, it, obviously, it's me who he had some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medications. Since you can't been... Since you haven't been that long on your current medications, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So, we will do a few tests regularly, but what I'd want for is for you to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. And come see me if something happens. Alright. So, how are you? Everything fine? I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently, this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Hmm. Other people have asked me that too. Teachers and students here. My parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital. Not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, and both the student base and the faculty seem to be very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And this is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. 
The thoughts send shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. Mm. That's great. Also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track nor even the pool. So I'd like to know if you've taken up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't. This way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off on the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Not as such. I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the can up. I pick up and lift the can up and down a few times like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder. Even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. The stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back like it was never gone. Physica, would you give us a second? What the fuck? The nurse grabs me by the shoulder without waiting for Rin's permission, which she doesn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you were still in your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. It's the same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise me to more be more serious about this from now on? You think this is a fucking game, kiddo? You think this is a fucking game, kiddo? Don't fuck with me! I know your type! I'm the OCD, thank you. She's not Misha, please stop throwing up gang signs. Being on the student council, they should know that this is against the school rules. I don't care if this is sign or... I don't care if this sign is a language you created. <laughs> the near miss a heart attack, come on. Is this a game to you? He knows what you do, he knows what we do. Hmm... Mmm. Mmm. I'm gonna catch up with Super Chats real quick. Um. Um. Where is... The stuff? Ah! There it is. I found the... I found the thing. If you have them. If you do have Miss Super Chats. Back on Isaac, you, he's gonna unleash his bonky on you? One, two, one means more lemons. What do you mean more lemons? We start from the most recent, it makes keeping track much easier. Oh. I, I, I just read, like, what, what was popped up on my thing. Uh, gotta go. Love how you switch from VA to narration with reverb. Reminds me of graphic audiobooks. Gonna listen to Bond later. Have a good night. Thank you, thank you. Uh, here, let me click viewer activity. And check from there. The Dino Man, thank you. Rin's pretty forward, but Pippa's voice for her is so disarming. Heh. <laughs> Angry Armchair, thank you. Not sure why, but Rin reminds me of fish. Cool, it's hoping, thank you. I just realized Rin's named after the god of manga. Welcome, Lang, thank you. Mrs. Obama, get down! Highly and Juggalo, thank you. Jesus Christ, Pippa, you can't just talk about groups like that. Holy shit. Mr. Please, thank you. The stream auto sensors when Pippa uses disability slurs. My little SD, thank you. To be fair, I'm pretty sure hard problems would affect that. I did, thank you. I thought Kelly got hit with an EMP or something. Got a nice one, thank you. Why does the cup jiggle? Micro noise, thank you. Fifth column. Alright, I read that. Uh, Bahama, thank you. Something is a football internet. Uh, yeah, I read these. Richard Connolly, thank you. Pippa, you were missing for a minute. I was scared. The fox, we miss you. Mr. thank you. Looks like the internet issues were defeated. Thalion, thank you. Great face, thank you. Taken out by the window sign. Pung Liu, thank you. I miss Pippa. Castle Saucy, thank you. Bobby, peace. Sound like stream ended. No, no, stream is not ended. Uh, yes, I'll take the- I'll take everything more seriously. I guess. Yes, I promise, definitely. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Press 1 for more jazz. He studies me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand, no answer, and I walk to Rin, who has been waiting. 
idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pale lighting fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off of them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? It comes out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out at her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Rin's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Rin is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, there for my heart. Will it make you better? No, not really. It just make me a little less worse. Ren keeps looking at me for a while longer, and she neither says anything further nor displays any kind of emotion I could discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. We leave the main building, and Ren leads us onwards towards the dorm. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on a slightly elevated ground, with a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design in the school. The entire wall, made of the same kind of bricks as the building itself, has been covered with some sort of painting. Most of it is still mere sketches. Quick lines drawn with black and white against the grey plastering that covers almost the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. Let's see. The left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's cause I don't get in the mood yesterday. Oh, it's cause I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. Then it was Sunday morning. I have to work on it, but the guys from the art class are helping with the negative plate spaces and base surfaces whenever, which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better and it's faster too. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little with her arm or whatever of it there actually is, to demonstrate, even though I got the point already. The white cotton of her sleeve flaps around and it makes me think it, it could look sadder than it does. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder of the student bases Special Properties has in the past few days. This girl doesn't notice my dreary feelings, of course, or the fact that she lost me a while ago already, and just keeps blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there is something I need to figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Why would the hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then it has to dry, and then it has to be painted over, and with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she made some kind of statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project. You did... this? Yeah, yeah. All of it. Yeah. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorrectness. It's okay, you can say. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if anything. It feels that I'm way more sensitive than Rin is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See, I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is. Maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was at using her feet to eat, I figure painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us have anything more to add to the subject. Afternoon light works pretty well. 
I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. Do you think it's flat? Eh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that, flat. You know, flat. Like some people are no substance, no meat. Or there should be some. I know a few girls who... Okay, I get it, but I couldn't really tell. I'm not that good with art. I can't name many artists or artistic terms. So I don't really have anything to say. Rin shrugs her shoulders at that, saying, Suit yourself, without saying it, and looks up at the sky, as if trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but... If you give me a hand with the paints, I could do a little before it's too dark. I wanted to get a halogen lamp like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Chisne. It really makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that every pair of hands is needed. Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be of any help, though. It's just mixing some paints. You can do that. Probably. Do you have motor control problems? Like, you know, those people who have some? Cerebral palsy, maybe? Not that I know of. I get it. Our thingy has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it then. They keep getting recruited into manual labor debt! So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl like syrup. I mix them creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form a new, monotone hue. Rin sets to work, every now and then asking me for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last millimeter before she is satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. Nah, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea. You're the artist here. A hint of smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly... whiter. That's not good. It has to be like... Like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life in your dream, but you can't remember it. Maybe it's yellow. Hmm. Despite the impossibility of mixing a color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that's being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Seeing a painting being born on the plastered wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints, crouching down on the paving, and just looking at her work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy. But Rin doesn't seem to mind the least. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire presence emits a completely different air as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even those short discussions soon evolve into a shorthand, both of us developing and using weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues. As if there was some need to conserve words and breath and sound. We spent the whole day with her! 
We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. Ah, That was pretty wholesome. What? Are we on to the next chapter? Do we make it to a new chapter, chat? Sarah, thank you. Who needs exercise when there's manual labor? Much more chill than Chizune. Yeah. Chizune is growing less on me as time goes on. Like, at first I found her really endearing, but then I see how she interacts with other students, and it's... it's... It's starting to bother me. Slime can slip in the you. Yes, is a new chapter, Pippa. Oh. Because she's the worst girl. Oh. <laughs> Not a new act, but this is a new scene. Oh, okay. The sound of an alarm pulls me out of a fitful slumber and into the unpleasant state of wakefulness. I linger under the blanket for a few minutes, gathering energy to rise up while making excuses as for why I already haven't. Honestly, I wouldn't mind staying here for all day. School is surprisingly exhausting after a long pause, and the culture shock still has not faded, I think. Still, despite getting an impression that skipping class is easy here, I don't think they are going to let me get away that easily. And the nurse is bound to keep breathing down my neck with the talk of exercising as well. So eventually, I do rise up, swallow the morning medications, and put on my old soccer clothing. <laughs> Thanks to my condition, I was exempted from taking part in gym classes at Yamaku, so I didn't get issued with a gym outfit. I'd order some to cover such a contingency, but wearing my old soccer clothes is kind of nostalgic. I can't use them for any more. Use them for that anymore, so maybe they can get a new life this way? A bit like me. After all, if I'm going to start taking care of myself, I can't afford to slack around. I'll start from the basics. Basics which include keeping the rest of my body in shape along with what little I can do to strengthen my heart. Maybe then I can go back to something approaching a normal life. Or at least something where I'm less likely to fall over dead at any minute. I'm surprised to discover that I'm not the only one present at the track. Not just that, but it's a face I've seen before. The prosthetic-legged girl who bowled over me in the hallway yesterday is running on the track lethally, like a half-mechanical gazelle. What was her name again? It was a short one, but I can't remember. She seems to be running laps at a somewhat easy lope, her prosthetic legs clacking rhythmically on the hard track surface. I wonder what reason she has for running this early in the morning. Maybe it's something akin to mine, and the nurse is oppressing the poor girl to jog like he's oppressing me. I certainly wouldn't be here if it weren't for my health and prompting me to do so. Even with the things like they are, even with things like they are, it's only because I wanted to get out of it the way. <laughs> and even with things being like they are, it's only because I wanted to get it out of the way early. The fact that I would be less likely to encounter someone who would witness my pitiful attempts to get in shape was merely a happy accident. I'd leave, but it seems that my former assailant noticed me on her last lap. She waves at me cheerfully and jogs over. Good morning! Your name is Hisa, right? She grins, seemingly pleased that she'd remembered my name. You may not remember me. Emmy? I knocked you over in the hallway yesterday. How could I forget such a... Uh, blunt introduction? Emmy has the decency to look vaguely apologetic for a moment before giggling. Yeah, sorry about that again. Oh, well, so long as you don't make a habit of it, I suppose I'll be fine. Great! I'm not sure she realized I was joking. So, the spy consultant the nurse was talking about, is that actually you? That's right. Oh. I was expecting someone from the nursing staff, to be honest. What? Are you saying I don't look like I could be a spy? No, this is more like a relief. I was afraid he would have someone to watch my every move. Unless you're here to do exactly that. No, I'm here for my own reasons. 
The nurse just asked me if I'd seen a messy-haired transfer student who looks like he's kind of lost around the track. So... Why are you down here? Emmy strikes a dramatic pose. Pointing! For what? Track! Ah, I see. You're on the track team, then. Emmy nods enthusiastically. Yep, I'm one of the better runners, too. And modest about it, too. Hey, you should join up. It's a good exercise, you know. I think that much activity is probably out of the question for me. No, I'm not even sure that I really like running all that much. Unless I'm not into organized sports, you know? It's true, I never even really got that much into soccer. I mean, I'd run around with my friends and all, but... That was really the only reason I ever played. It wasn't for the glory to be found on the field, that's for sure. Emmy seems to understand my meaning. I see, I see. Not into the whole organization thing. But now that you're here, I guess we're going to run together, huh? What? Uh, sure, I guess. Emmy seems pleased. Are you going to warm up? The real men don't warm up. Oh no, you should always warm up. Bad he so. She scolds me enthusiastically, but then smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. She's really close. She laughs suddenly. Oh, heck, I don't even have to stretch my legs. As if to confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple of times, giving a passing impression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. <laughs> Let's go! So we... <laughs> the fucking noises. <laughs> the noises! Oh my god! <laughs> so we both take off around the track, and I can immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. Emmy moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with a sort of wild abandon. I find myself concentrating more on running properly. And spread, right? And something about hitting on the balls at your feet rather than the heels. I try to match my stride to Emmy's, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently, I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. I'm really not feeling up to more than a couple of laps today and slow to a walk pretty quickly. Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes me a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. Eh, yeah. I'm not in very good shape right now. Emmy nods and then grins at me again. She seems to do a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you started, right? Next time, you just have to try and hold out longer, and then longer, and longer, and eventually you'll be great! I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm going to get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Emmy shrugs unconcernedly. No, I've got plenty of time. I notice that she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another careless shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Izo. Uh, yeah. See you later. I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. But like Emmy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice at least to feel like I've taken some semblance of control over my own health. I'll have to try to keep this up. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired from all the running, so I just want to unwind, but I don't want to break my slow building, slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. See you later, Terminator. What the hell? <laughs> After taking a long shower anyway, I dry myself off and get out of the stall to put on my clothes. Out of nowhere, a shadow appears within the mist, looming and radiating malicious intent. It bursts through the fog. So, 
What are you doing here? What the hell? You scared me. What's your problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean all over the place? I want to ask if he's been looking for me like that. Stark naked, but hold my tongue back. I finally realize I'm still naked too and quickly hold my shirt in front of me, but Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. His glasses are fogged up, but then why doesn't he wipe them off? Is his vision so bad it's like he's perpetually seen through fog? You know, you're Roman. Yeah, that's it. I, hey, I mean, I, I still had to get up though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? He puts on an innocent face and looks away, trying very hard to look very casual. It doesn't work. He's as transparent as his window pane sized glasses. Talking neutrally like this, wearing nothing, feels awkward. Actually, somehow, it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked. To say nothing of the fact that he's naked as well! I try brushing the feeling off with little success. Money. Sure. Awesome. Wait, why do you need it? Oh, he's angry. Eh. Uh, can't you just give it to me because I had the goodwill not to run through your pockets while you were in the shower? I could have, but I exercised restraint, and in the end, isn't the, the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. This makes no sense. If it's the thought that counts, I should withhold payment, since his thoughts were clearly impure and his intentions are probably even more sinister, since he can't tell me what they are. I say as much to him. I'm offended, man, but if that's your game, then fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order pizza, and I already have most of the cost of the pizza. I need your help for the rest. I can get some of that pizza too, right? No! Are you serious? Yeah, I would give you some, but you have class, so you don't have time to eat pizza. What about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza and pay the guy, and then eat it. It's not easy. You have to obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you and the pizza, and then we'll ask for a slice. It's a hard world out there. Everyone wants a piece. Then you're left pizzaless in an unforgiving world. It's happened before. That's how I know. Every day, I plan my vengeance so that the people who wronged me order a pizza. I will be there. I've ever been so, oh, so that when the people who order a pizza wrong fuck. Thank you, Nana, for the raid! Thank you, thank you! Every day I plan my vengeance so that when the people who wronged me order a pizza, I will be there, ever vigilant. Kenji strikes a dramatic pose, completely without irony. But yeah, I only need like 400 yen. Please, you're my only hope. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza, it's too far. I try not to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. Let me tell you what happened the last time I went out without carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside. I can't remember what I was doing. Some Something standing, maybe wondering how I got there. And then out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of lightning splitting into the sky. Like how you split a sandwich into two equal pieces to make it more manageable to hold and eat a bird. Crap on my head. It was the second most shocking of my life. Shocking moment of my life. What was the first? He ignores me and keeps going. I want to grab him and shake him. Is he just trying to keep momentum? I'll go with that. Even if it's more likely, he just doesn't hear me. When do we get DSL? <laughs> it was like in the opening to some kind of anime show. You know, there is always a part where the main dude is fighting his rival and they fly at each other and clash swords and they're like big dramatic colored auras and zooms. It was like that, but with pool. Okay. So yeah, I need some money. Please don't leave me hanging, man. I only need a thousand yen. I thought it was 400. Okay. What? I'll pay you back, I swear. You better. That's what it means to borrow stuff. I don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. You have one week. Ah! Kenji winces and makes a noise like a dying cow. A particularly disturbing fact given that the, his baton is conducting freely. You're not supposed to be that tight ass about money between brothers and arms, man! Men have it bad enough as it is. You know that male porn stars only make about half of what female porn stars make? That doesn't mean anything unless you're a porn star. So maybe I am a porn star on the side, struggling to make ends meet as I fight the feminist agenda, and you can't even spot me your crumbs, you bastard? Nobody understands. Nobody! Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? This 
feminist agenda stuff again? This stuff is important. I can see that you don't give a shit, but this is serious here. Feminists are a dangerous enemy. Make no mistake. You take them lightly and you'll wake up in the morning with a knife in your back. Bam! Out of nowhere! How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? Women are terrible at stabbing things! I thought you just said don't take them lightly. Well, I mean, don't take them lightly for the big things. Eventually, they're not a threat, but there, there was some kind of war, like a big war with men on one side and the feminist forces on the other side. It would be pretty ugly. And that day will come when the feminists come out of their central top secret worldwide feminist headquarters and say, it's on now, motherfuckers! You're being ridiculous. There's no big worldwide feminist headquarters building. Where would they even hide that? I mean, it'd have to be massive. You couldn't hide that on Earth. Someone would notice a big fortress with women only in it. Who said it was on Earth? I turn, I turn away from Kenji and start practicing frowning faces in a mirror so that I can figure out what kind of frown will best express my emotions. He can't see me from this distance anyways. Which, unfortunately, means that he just keeps on ranting without any regard to sense or sensibility. Yeah, there's a war going on. A war not many know about. But it's a great one that will one day boil over and encompass all of the known world. Then we will have to pick sides and we will have to make a stand. In fact, it's happening right now. Imagine it. The bloody battlefield of vicious conflict without end. I almost gave up even when I thought this cause was silly. When I grew tired of the bleakness of our fight. When I mistook the time the power went out for a feminist raid and thought the end was near. But then I realized that if I gave up, it would all be over. And I was like, whoa, when I knew I had to get serious because I am the last sane man in an insane world. It's about duty. Must be pretty crappy movement if it all hinges on one naked guy ranting in a bathroom at another naked guy. So can I have the money? He's blocking the way out. It's getting cold because I'm still naked and I want to go to class, so I agree to spot him the money. Awesome, thanks, dude. We should go bowling later on. Bowling? Yeah, it's the ultimate sport. There are almost no women bowlers either, making it the most... also the manliest sport. Should I wear my pink bowling shirt with the matching shoes or the pastel green with the flower accents? There are bowling clothes? Maybe. Anyway, you better pay me back. I can pay you back in stuff, right? I don't have time to ask him to elaborate on what that means. I, I, I don't know. I have to get to class. You're kind of in the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to hold you up and I have stuff to do myself. The time has come! The time for what? I just like saying that. Okay, now the time has really come! For what? I have to use the bathroom. Get out of it. I was just going to it! What does that mean? It's a big bathroom! So I have to be alone or I can't go. The pressure! Okay, what if someone else comes in? Meh. Nah. I'll think of something. I give him... I give him my practice round and it looks kind of silly reflected in his glasses. He either doesn't notice or doesn't see. Anyway, so I get dressed and run back to my room. Feeling as though an eternity has passed since I woke up. That is time I will never get back. I'll get him for this somehow. But right now, I have to get to class. I'm the first person in class today, although I think I'm a little too early. Then again, sitting alone here for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with Kenji. The combination of fatigue, frustration, and boredom starts making me feel very tired. I black out for a second, waking up when my head hits the surface of my desk. Rubbing my forehead, I realize this is as good a reason as any to stand up for now and stop coming to class so early later. Eventually, I hear a tapping noise outside the hallway, and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. She's not in this class, so she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looking hesitant as if she were a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so because she looks I consider doing so because she looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in on her own accord, though, after straightening her skirt and short collar as if it was some of import Fuck. As if it was of some importance to look prim when entering our classroom. Excuse me. She calls into the quiet classroom with a probing, delicate voice. I realize the silence must unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Good morning, Lily. Isao, good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she's thinking 
I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to her before. It's likely, if I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today by any chance? No, she seems to come in only just before the bells ring, or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in the school right now. I didn't hear anyone else on my way here. I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself for, some, for doing something that other people should. Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyway. It's a very busy morning today. The festival is coming up soon. And today is the deadline for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that is why it's so quiet today. What the fuck was that? Hi, hi! Misha pops into the room with Shizune as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. No! Hi. Look! It's the class representative! Hello! Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha's or Shizne's use of the word look. Good morning. Of course! You're not the representative of this class, right? Right? I'm not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answers to Shizune than she was with me the other day. I guess they really don't get along at all. Then I realize that Lily might not actually know Shizune is present, and she's trying to detect whether or not she is to know who she is talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha. But knowing that she and Shizune are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizune being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decided to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, she's an A. What? What's with this expression? What's with that expression? You were here even earlier than us! Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on she's an A's behalf too? You ruined their game? Oh man. It's not that weird though, that she's an A didn't like my comment. It's true, I was here earlier than them, so me saying something like that could definitely be misinterpreted as anything. Especially to she's an A who doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gauge intent. Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, she's an A has already moved on. Class rep! It's a good thing you're here! We have to talk! is coming up in three days, right? Every other class has already handed in their project budget reports for their events. Even the first years, except you. <laughs> There's still time to hand it in, isn't there? Today! The deadline is today! You're certainly taking your time, aren't you? If I had it my way, I'd have all the necessary paperwork days ago. But someone had to say, the deadline, please extend it. Yes, that was me. Planning something on this scale is not a small task. And a week is too small a time for him to expect a whole class to work out such a complex issue completely. Oh, damn. Do you want to know what's harder than distributing the funds for one class's event? Handling the same matter for every class in the school and then some! The one who does that is me! Misha, Misha puts her hands on her hips and stands up straight. Wow, she is really getting into the role. Lily doesn't look like she's very amused, though. 
Hey, she's Nate. Aren't you being a little too hard on her? There's still a whole day left. Please, Isao. It's all right. Lily seems happy I'm taking her side, but a bit conflicted that I might not think she can take care of herself. Uh, yes, Omicron. Uh, this is Misha, and she is the interpreter for this girl. She's now. If this is about the budget, then I disappointed you. Oh, then I'm disappointed you think I've forgotten about it. I understand how important it is. Then, can I have it, please? She's an ace. She might not have it on her at this exact second. God damn, she's not kind of a bitch. What the fuck? It's not here right now. I asked two students to take care of it for me. Students from my class. She emphasizes the last sentence much to my surprise. She knows about Shizune and Misha's efforts to rope me into the student council. I guess word must have gotten around and now she's using me as ammo against Shizune. This just gets better and better. Now her expressions, like, are cute, but now they, like, come off as, like, bratty and, like... Like, kind of, like, karen -y. It was your responsibility! A budget report isn't something you should just be delegating away. As class rep, it's, our, it's your job to be on top of things. This kind of disregard for proper procedure is really just terrible! They completed it, being capable of doing so. But the students have been sick recently, so they could not come to school and give it back to me. If you want, I will apologize on their behalf for getting sick. Okay! Although Misha misses Lily's little jab entirely, Shizune doesn't. And she seems torn between being offended by Lily's daring and jumping for joy at the prospect of a challenge. I'm surprised Lily went that route with it. Lily, don't they live here at the school? That's a five minute walk, you know. What could they possibly have that prevents them from taking five minutes out of their busy lives to drop off something that will affect the enjoyment of their entire class? Oh my god. Lily opens her mouth to say something, but Shizune closes the gap between them and starts signing furiously, waving her hands around like an orchestra conductor. Misha tries her best to convey the same passion, but can't seem to lose her normal cheerful tone. The result is interesting and somewhat surreal. And what's with that attitude? I said that it's not something you should be delegating away. Are you the class representative or aren't you? Tell me the names of those two students. They should have your job if you can't even handle this, something this simple yourself. One form isn't the full extent of what I'm supposed to take care of. Lily's tone is growing slightly impatient, but she is doing a good job of not letting Shizune see how unsettled she is becoming. She's playing her cards close to her chest. Shizune, on the other hand, wraps her fingers cheerfully along the edge of her glasses. Knowing Lily can neither hear nor see how excited she is. Fuck, dude. Oh my fucking god. I hate this shit. I hate this shit. What is this drama? What is this drama? What is, what what the fuck? What the fuck? What is wrong with these women? The cat fight. Oh my god. Of course you can do so much, class rep. It must be difficult being you. Oh my fucking god. Lily tightens her lips at Misha's words, clearly understanding the intent behind them, even though Misha delivers them without even a hint of the sarcasm which they were meant to have. Shizune and Lily don't like each other, that much is clear. But this seems a little much. It seems like Lily has had enough and is ready to push back. What's with the panic shot? <laughs> I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came by. You must be very talented to have finished all your student council duties so quickly that you can track me down to make sure I don't forget my own. Are you accused? Are you, are 
are you accusing me of slacking off? It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I don't think so. That would be a very difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right! The difference between us is like heaven and hell! And it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. The air between them ripples with the heat of their enmity. Well, not really. They can't disguise it anymore, though. Even Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. Oh. Misha! Don't you slack off either! What are you talking about? Aren't you taking part in the festival, Hita? You are, aren't you? Then, I hope you're going to do a lot more to make sure it goes smoothly than this person! I don't understand why Shizune is suddenly getting mad at me. This seems like an important choice, so I'm gonna make a save. You may leave. Thank you so much for becoming a big peepee. -pee. Route choice time. So our first choice is don't drag me into this. I've done my part. And the second one is, hey, come on, cut me and Lily some slack. Obviously, the one that mentions Lily is going to give us more affection with her. I'll have that. Thank you. What's wrong with these women? Pippa, you answered your own question. Can Ash Corp? Thank you. Have we been introduced to Hideki Hakamichi yet? I have a feeling that they'll be Pippa's favorite character. I am not sure who that is. Also, why does the music always cut out? Um... Ash Kajione, thank you. What's wrong with these women? Oxymoron. Mimo, thank you. Big Pippi. Aaron G, thank you. Truly the best romance is Kenji. Nod Clip, thank you. He's like Alex Jones in Sanity with a hint of truth. Crossover Maniac, thank you. Kenji red pilling the MC on Reptilian Shapeshifters win. Justy's nuts, thank you. He's right, you know. Ken Ash Corp, thank you. Kenji's disability is that he's right about everything. I'm. Maybe this is maybe this is like kind of shallow to say, I guess, but like I'm very surprised that like. The stuff that Kenji's saying is treated like... Like a joke. I guess. I get Like, like given, given the nature of... Where Katawa Shoujo was developed, I... Like, I don't mean this in like a... Like, I'm punching at the authors kind of way. Like, I don't think it's like a bad thing or whatever. To portray the character... One way or another. I'm just like, I'm just surprised that. Yeah, it was 2004. Fair enough. Fair enough. Little did they. Little did they know. It hits different. It hits different in. Modern context. <laughs> Sergeant Buck, thank you. What did he mean by this? Shiny, thank you. Is there a Kenji route? Just asking. There is. Anthony Delgado, thank you. Pippa's distracted because she wants to see behind the leaf. Zara, thank you. Chicken pizza money. McClack, thank you. When do we get the ESL emote? <sighs> Quail, thank you. Are you skipping your English reps? I just cannot read today. I, I, I do not know why I can't read today. I think, I think I expended too much mental processing power on other shit today and fried all my circuits. Slime Ken Slimba, thank you. JK. Oh, Lord Brambar, thank you. Kenji likes you and he wants you. Malosi, thank you. Apologies in advance, but the decision you make with the spy will lock you into a certain route. I'm Kinsilpa, thank you. Yes, this is a new chapter, Pippa. Here, thank you. Who needs exercise when there's manual labor? I, I really hope we're not locked permanently into Emmy's route by agreeing to go do exercise. Come back, thank you. If Darwin's on the origin of species is to be trusted in reference to adaptability, Tezuka Rin is probably deft enough with her feet to empty a gogurt tube with ease, and that's evolution, baby. Autocraft, thank you. I'll do my best. Autocraft, thank you. Got work tomorrow morning, so I gotta sleep. Listen to the rest, hoping for burn victim victory. Rain Hellfire, thank you. Before Supa has become overwhelming, can I special request a DJ quad stream ending today? Uh, auxiliary character, thank you. Kenji was 10 years ahead of his time. Many true words have been said in jest. Don't listen to chat about routes. Remember, you asked for no backseating. True. True. No backseating. Uh, Mr. Aaron, thank you. 2011 was a different time. And our Carter, thank you. Literal feminist shadow government. Yeah. With the headquarters. That's the funny part. That, that was the part. That was the part that, like, made me laugh a little bit. Where it's like, imagine, imagine there being a feminist headquarters. And all I can think about is, like, <laughs> I won't get into it. I won't get into it. It's not funny. Thank you. Uh, Nima, thank you. All right, let's jump back into it. All right. I'm going to say, hey, come on, cut me and Lily some slack. I, I really don't like how she's is acting. 
I I like to imagine maybe there's a route where we can help fix her attitude and we can bring out the positive traits that we see in her a little bit more. But as it stands right now, I, 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 I don't feel like fixing her. I, I don't want to fix her. <laughs> hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not like I could have done much, even if I wanted. Oh god, now my eye's burning. Ow! Ow, my eye is burning! We can fix her, bros. We can't fix! Oh, boy. Let her burn. Is stream dying again? It looks fine on my end. I'm an Atrix, thank you. You can't fix her. She won't listen. Oh, my god. She's broken. No Claritin still? I just did go and pick up some Claritin, but I have no idea where it got put. I have... No idea where the Claritin went. That's right. You shouldn't expect a transfer student to jump right into it on his first week. Lily taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decide to back her up, too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable with us both. I feel like it's a bit much for Hisao to... to say that... I guess, I guess Shizna is out of line entirely with Lily. Like, I think, I think Shizna is being too aggressive about trying to get the form handed in. And I do think Lily's excuses are a little bit weak. Right? Like, if all the students live on campus, then even if Lily herself didn't do it, she could have delegated somebody else to go and collect the forms from those two students. However, Shizune gave the deadline, and Lily is well within her right to push it to the deadline, right? It's, it's the deadline. It would have been better if she did it earlier. Like, yeah, Lily's excuses are weak, but Shizune is making things personal. True. True. They're blind, they have trouble navigating. Well, that's why you, ha you can have somebody else go and collect the forms, but also Lily is not... She's not incompetent. She can go and collect the forms herself. She's able to navigate around. Right? I, I don't feel like... Like, I don't want to, like, speak for a fictional character, but I feel like the character of Lily herself would be annoyed if you said, oh, well, you're blind, so you can't go and get the forms yourself. She's, she's totally capable of going to the dorms and getting the, the forms, but it's... I don't know. She definitely has friends. She has Hanako. Even if she didn't want to send Hanako to go get stuff, she could ask somebody else. She's the class representative. She could have delegated somebody to go get the forms from those students if they were sick and unable to hand them in in a more timely fashion. But at the same time, Chisne is pushing things way too aggressively. There's a deadline for a reason. If you needed the forms before the deadline, then you should have set the deadline earlier. The deadline was extended, then the paperwork sat around for a week. Which is annoying, but she chose to extend the deadline. It's... If you're gonna, if you're gonna take control of the situation, you have to assert control over the situation. You can't just be mad that other people pushed, pushed everything to the limit, because that's just what people are gonna do, right? That's what, that's what happens. You have to, you have to be prepared and take control of the situation, not get mad at people and attack the whatever. Mr. thank you. Of course, Pippa sympathizes with Lily. She's blind too. Scrap, thank you. Your love for Lily has blinded you. Quit being deaf to Shizna's arguments. But I also defended Shizna. I... I think you're... I think you're just trying to argue with me. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, no, I see what you did. Fuck, I'm, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. Shut the fuck up. Never send me a super chat ever again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking show up to your house and kick the shit out of you. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's making a joke. I, I didn't understand that. Leave me alone. I caught on. It took me a second. It took a few Pippa smugs, but I caught on. God fucking damn it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
been the Rexic you, not many people realize, but there is a massive bullying inside of disabled communities. Uh... And deaf people are on average amongst the worst. Any clicks? Is this also a joke or is this a thing? Tech, thank you. He's out can openly see how smug she's Shizne is about... This while Lily's trying to appear hourly professional. He can see she's Shizne likes the drama. That is true. I don't... I don't... I, I don't necessarily know if Shizne is intentionally... Like, I don't, I don't know if she's being malicious. Or if she just likes the competition and the drama of it, right? Like, maybe, maybe it's more about, like, the competition. It's about the, it's about the debate. It's about the feeling, I guess, challenged that she likes. It could, it could be that. Or it could be she doesn't like Lily, has something against her. I kind of... I kind of, I kind of am guessing a little bit of column A, but a lot of column B, because it seems like she ostracized Hanako for being friends with Lily, potentially. I mean, we don't know that's why, but that's kind of what I feel like the story is implying so far. Um, which... Shizne as class representative absolutely should not be ostracizing any members of her class like that at all. And especially cause, just because she has like beef with Lily. It's like, eh. eh. It's just, it seems like a, it seems like a bad combination of personality traits. Background noise, thank you. You'd fit in great at the school, Pippa. Uh, Mr. Yura, thank you. On second thought, maybe you should have gone with Shizne since she's technically dumb. Bahama, thank you. Pippa, this is bad even for you. Uh, background noise, thank you. Heck, thank you. He's out can... Alright, I read that. What, what is bad even for me? Cold acid, thank you. She's nice. Also a dom. What part is bad even for me? What do you mean by this? I grew up around people like this. Yes, it's true. She is 100%. She is. Um, Spoilers, Pippa. He means not getting the pun. Oh. Leave me alone! Alright. <clears throat> Missed the joke and missed the follow-up. I'm... Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Excuses, excuses. This class rep has had plenty of time to deal with her reports. And we repeatedly offered you a position to help with the student council work. But you refused to commit yourself to making the festival a success. Oh my god, that is such Karen speak! Oh my god! Oh my god! I... God. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... Fuck, man. I don't have time for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Shizne, and that is what she wants. Whatever. Forget it. Oh, no! Oh, no! Kisao, don't you know when somebody is like challenging you to a fucking debate about how everything is your fault? If you try and dismiss it, you are a villain. It is so fucking over. Yeah, wrong move, bro. Wrong move. The, the, the classic blunder. You fucking fool. Space guy riding you. It's crazy watching Pippa fall out of love in real time. Yeah, I. Oh, man. Man, this is so fucked up, man! I thought she's there was so cute! I thought she was so quirky! I thought her competitive spirit was really endearing! She's a bitch. Say something, you Misha's going to grow up to be president of an HOA! I don't think this is Misha. I think Misha is just a... Just a lackey, right? Like... I don't... I don't think Misha is... The one being mean. Like, from what the writing has said so far, she doesn't even realize, like, that the words are supposed to be sarcastic. She's just saying them in, like, her happy chipper tone. She doesn't know any better. 
Which makes me wonder what Shizune might be doing to Misha, right? Like, I don't know how deep the writing of this goes, and maybe I'm ascribing, like, prescribing way too much malice to, to Shizune, but, like, people like Shizune tend to be controlling fucking assholes, and I can just imagine, like, if, if, if Shizune is treating, like, Hanako and Lily like this, I can only imagine Shizune is also being a bitch to Misha. But maybe it's just their friends, so Misha's immune, whatever. I don't know. But usually, like, in real life with people like this, they're fucking shitty to everyone. Echo noise, thank you. Her grandma must be Gertrude, true and real. Mistakes have been made, thank you. Your voice is annoying, but your voice acting is pretty good. I don't know how that works, but here's some money. Oh, well, thank you. I turned my back at them. Spoilers? Okay, I'm not reading chat. Lily, class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I'll tell Hanako you were looking for her. I can feel she's in a freezing. Maybe this is the first time she's ever been ignored in such a blunt manner. Thank you, Hisao. I'll leave now, then. She gives me the sweetest smile I've seen all week and turns on her heels to make her exit. As soon as Lily walks out the door, I suddenly start feeling reluctant about turning to face Shizune. I can feel her eyes burning into my back and can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Misha to say something to alleviate the tension, but it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of Shizune's footsteps as she marches out of the room. She doesn't return until a few minutes before class. Hanako doesn't come to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Lily was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at the hospital, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead of opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The rhythmic clashing of chalk on blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations just to pass the time, even though they are right there in the textbook. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do, so I stay for a while, reviewing what we covered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with the crowding in the hallways. I notice Shizune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. She's an signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there's pent-up anger in there. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. I put my head down. Whatever they're discussing, it looks like serious business. Shizune signs to, the, signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters, and then on top of that she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. Luckily for her, their business is soon finished and the girls sit down on their seats again. Uh, I'm so tired! She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to reconcile what she's in a bit without getting roped into the student council thing again. Though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. She stays scoffs at me at first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Nisha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Nisha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizna is actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Nisha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all of our strength! We would shame ourselves in front of the school... The, uh, <coughs> we would shame ourselves in front of the past school... Fuck! 
<gasps> we would shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festivals were to fail. Reading's hard. Misha's disability is being Pippa, so true. Subject yourself! That's why there must be no flaws! No, er, I think that was encumbrances? No, nothing that might make this festival short of perfect! She's an ace, passionate speech, and Misha's in acting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello! I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden by the door. Hey! Playing delinquent again? Oh, that's... Oh, that's not like a... Oh... Oh... Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. That made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, that made me really uncomfortable. Makes her sound like a douche. I, I, I don't think this time it was. Yeah, this time it was Misha. I, I don't think, I don't think it was intentional. I, I, I think, I think Misha. I'm giving Misha the benefit of the doubt right now. I, I don't think Misha did that intentionally. Yeah, I think that was just a joke that came off poorly. I think she's just dumb. I don't think Misha meant it like that. I don't either. I think... Okay, I think Misha is such a bubbly and energetic person. And kind of... No thoughts head empty. That... She does not realize... How that comment... Of like... Singling Hanako out like that and... Like putting a spotlight on her behavior... Would make her uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't- I don't think Misha can read the room like that. She's nice stares at her probingly, causing Hanako to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped around- wrapped nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanako? Has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Sato. She, uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako looks uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It's a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do... Do you know where she is? Why are you giving a bitchy face?! God, I hate her! If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you missed each other. She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Yeah. I can come with you. If it's okay. Hanako nods fractionally, still on guard, her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back off now. She has this really troubled expression she seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. I kind of understand why she always seems to be so wary. Or maybe more like, why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to eat with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour, but I can understand why Hanako could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag and we take her leave. Hanako skips a little to meet my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. It doesn't take too long for us to be walking at a comfortable pace down the hallway. 
It almost feels like we're going for a stroll together. Something that I can't say I've really done before with a girl. This guy is creepy. Hanako doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing, though. Even though we are walking at the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's still a little uncomfortable around me, given how shy she is. It doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there is not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. Hanako's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? Just at the library. I was reading. So she does spend the classes, she skips the library. Ah, so not exactly a thorough search then. Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like she's in, I said, right? Right. With the slightest of nods, Hanako agrees with my reasoning. God, she's being so awkward. It's like I need the double-layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small talk might help her become a bit more used to me. It isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both of our minds. So, you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? Yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked a question. That was rather obvious, after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle either, so I suspect Lily may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a sharp, almost reflexive nod. Compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech, Hanako hastens to make her answers as prompt and short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, even though, even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. <coughs> it's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more. Both of us contend with... Both of us contend that the discussions reached an end. As we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading down the stairs, like a school of fish moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be keeping mostly to themselves, but before I can notice her doing so, Hanako has moved around behind me. Hey, are you alright? Just keep going. The students pass, w pass us without as much as a second glance, and Hanako takes up position to my side again as we enter the building, her momentary reprieve from her anxiety all but snatched away. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've ever known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanako seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in her fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily acting as a mediator, I doubt Hanako would have even been able to walk beside me like this. She seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in strained silence while I rue her inability to socialize at all. After we make up our make our way up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. God, I feel I feel Hanako. I I don't I don't shut down like as bad anymore, but I used to like really, really shut down. But like with Hanako, like she seems so like gentle and like her instinct is to flee. Whereas like with me, I, I would like enter like fight mode. Like I feel like I feel like everything is like if somebody approaches me, it's like a con like a confrontation. I need to be on guard, like they're ready to fucking attack me or whatever. Oh, ugh. I I did not I I specked into the shy girl tree, but but combat focus. <laughs> Type of feral woman, a little bit feral. Well, I guess we found her. Nice shoes, Pippa. I'm Shut up. That wasn't hard. Did Hanako come here first and then come to me for backup? I wonder. Like a cornered rat. Yes. <laughs> well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. Eventually, the two of us reach the door to Class 3-2, with Hanako less than subtly positioning herself behind me. I open the door. Whoa, their classroom is completely different! Inside is a hive of activity. 
Seemingly every student in the class talking at once as they walk, work hurriedly on their separate tasks. Going by the paint cans, decorations, and banners being made, it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Finding her among the den is surprisingly easy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple of students gathered around her as she stands at the front of the class, she seems to be in charge of the preparations, or at least busy organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the various students hunched over the floor, or for lack of desk space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily! She perks her head up as she breaks off talking to a noticeably smaller girl who must be her classmate, trying to listen as best as she can. Sorry, who? Ah, sorry, Kisao. I have Hanako too. You wave at the blind girl! Hi. She's pretty skittish, considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to assess the situation before turning to the other student once again. For the moment, just ask Moria for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. A quick nod and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face for orientation. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? I quickly turn about, leaning to the side to see past Hanako. Sure enough, in a corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remain only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even partial eyesight, so they're high in demand. That's right. Class 3-2 was specially for students with poor vision. Preparing for the festival must be must be pretty arduous for them. Need a hand? I could give you help if you need some. Maybe Hanako could too. A chance to set her mind on something would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods in affirmation afterwards, afterwards so I'm confident I made the right one. <laughs> Lily gives a noticeable sigh of relief. Peace out is such a bro! He's so- he's so considerate of Hanako! That's so sweet! How come with everybody else? Kisao is like... I see that you're blind! Can I give you a hand, Emmy? So! Or, can I give you a hand? Rin? So, Emmy, I see you have no legs! Right? He's like- he's like that! He's like that with all the other people! And then with Hanako, he's like... Oh yeah, I'll help you, don't worry. Oh my god, you can walk behind me. Blah, 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 blah. What the fuck? No matter, they go blind leading the blind. Because <laughs> he really likes her. Does Hanako only have one eye? I don't know. Different writers. Is that what it is, maybe? I don't know. He has a soft spot for the Shy Girls. Fatherly instincts. Literally the Ramsey- He's literally that Ramsey mean. Uh, the chosen one, thank you. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Amy. Amy, Mama, thank you. He thinks she's hot. Makes sense. Ah, that's good. That might actually get finished before- oh, This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a big task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Kenji, sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met? Wait, 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 wait! Wait! Did they? Did they put? No, hold on a second. Did... Did she's name? Assign... The painting tasks? And like the design stuff? To the... To the visually impaired kids? I just realized! I just fucking realized! Did she today? Oh my... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, she didn't assign it! Seems that way? I don't know! I... I... Oh... No... Oh. Sigma Syndicate, thank you. No wonder the blind class had trouble filling out the form, she's there. 
Oh. Uh, the class chose their own projects? Okay. I really... I, we need, like, the lore masters out here. I have a lot of questions to ask. I have so many questions to ask. I... I swear to God, if she's they told the blind kids to go paint. Holy shit! Holy shit! That'd be so fucked up! It's funnier if you just blame she's they for everything. I'm... I'm really hoping that it's just they have to do some painting, like, incidentally. Hey, <laughs> blind class, paint the murals. She's Nae's worst girl, but I don't think she's that bad. Maybe that's She's Nae's problem? The blind people volunteered? I don't know. I don't know, man. She's Nae does not have that level of power. Well, she's she's the school president, right? She's the president of the student council. She's on the bulwark. So I would assume that there'd be like... Okay, yeah, every class has to paint their booths. Okay, I'm hoping that's what it is. I, Sigma Syndicate, I'm really hoping what that is. That's what that is. Because, like, in my head, I was imagining... Oh, man. Wait, they're all, like, doing painting assignments, and it's, like, really hard for a bunch of them? And, and like, Kenji's the only one that can, like, really, really do it? Did... Did they get put a... Did, 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 did they get put in charge of, like, making, like, the signs and shit? I don't know, man. That'd be so fucked up. <laughs> Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're getting friends so fast. Friend, I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Hanako's silence during the proceedings reminds me of the reason I put her up to helping in the first place. Well, we'll go help him then. He knows what he's doing, right? That's right. Just ask if you have any problems. Coursing in ascent, Hanako and I begin another trek across the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white calico in front of him. <laughs> hey, Kenji. No answer. He continues dragging his paint-soaked brush along the large, half-painted kanji that's sketched on the sheet and pencil. Kenji? Ha! Huh? Who is it? What? Who is it? If this is the way he treats class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. Oh, oh, I missed it. It's me. He's out from the... Right, right, right. I know that man. What are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to get really focused on his work. Hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Hanako's footsteps as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's still here. I was just going to help with the banner. Hanako and I, that is. Hello. Now oh, we're uh, hi. I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanukkah enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden full hospitality is slightly unsettling. Oh, right. Women. On second thoughts, this may not have been a great idea after all. Hanako and I grudgingly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji, noting the several small paint tins on the ground around it. Class 3-2. Noodle stall. You guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some stalls outside or something. Or something. His non-committal nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So, how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over to grab a brush, I notice Hanako is already debating between colors to use. Oh, By the time I've brushed... I've put brush to cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around her worked. With a dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanako's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially, though. Okay, man, why are you here? Hanako just wanted some help to find Lily, that's all. He apparently disapproves of my motivations. I get it. It looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep undercover. I should have guessed. 
Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him in any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks. There's no better way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school. A harsh world. Yes. Very harsh. He misses my true meaning as he leans back, satisfied I'm sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to work. No, no CG of the three of us painting? Man. Finished. Looks like I am too. Good job. The two of us connect up the lines of our patterns, mine being as close a copy as I could manage of hers. We were robbed! With a grunt, I lower myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Hanako and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking amongst themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise. It's getting pretty late. Need a hand? Ah! I offer a hand to Hanako, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend even to there, just how much of her body was burned? I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. Looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I meant the banner. It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the results, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We finished the banner. I guess that's all that needs to be done? Lily gives an appreciative nod. Hmm. Thank you, Hiso. Honiko, if there's any way, I can thank you. It's fine. Beat sitting in my room studying, at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still here? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, just finished. He carefully slides his sign onto an empty section of shelf to dry before quickly walking past us and out the door. See ya, man. Bye. Botched suntan. Now! <laughs> the remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well. Leaving only the three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope we don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed. The class's plan this year were ambitious. Maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone into them. My, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now, there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's getting pretty late. Should we go? That's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hisao? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lighting really makes the gardens look quite different. Compared to the usual look of lush greenery, things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eat the most of the their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Lily's cane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Even Without even noticing it, I let out a small yawn. Tired? Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Shizune took me kind of off guard, though. I grit my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Ah, uh, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. She's and I... and I... go back some ways. 
Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Shizune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance to Hanako for her views on this, but her expression is, unsurprisingly, evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologizing for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over, in any case. A change of topics welcome, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine, my old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals and such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world. Hanako and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savoring the fact that none of the staff are able to- are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That'd go away towards explaining her well-bred speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to the dormitories, it eventually comes to leave for our respective rooms. See ya, Lily. Hanako. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms, just next to the guys. As is to be expected of such an arrangement, there's sta a staff member casually patrolling around outside to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past him, I quickly stretch my arms and rub my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor for so long before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seem almost a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. But it's not all that bad. Oh my god. Okay, and with that... Shit. With that, my microphone stand has come off the desk. So now seems like a good time to move on to Super Chats. <laughs> and... I will revisit this next week. It's so over. Yeah, it... <laughs> the problem is with my desk is that it's not... Oh my god, the bottom part fell off. The problem with my desk is that it doesn't have a flat surface underneath. The weird timing. It's not really weird timing. It was falling off the entire time. It's just when I shifted it that final time. It, so now my microphone is sitting in my lap. It also came off when I was doing the vocal lessons, which was very awkward. And I sat there fiddling with it, smiling nervously. Yeah, I thought it was thunder. Nope. Can I call anything before I get your face? Well, yeah. Is your desk also disabled? No, the problem with my desk is that it is a, uh... It's a fold-out table. And so underneath the desk... I wish I could just... Can I just... Never mind, it doesn't have labels on it. Um, it's like a gray fold-out desk with black legs, right? So it's just a table. And... So, like, the lip underneath it has, like, there's, like, the start of the lip, and then there's, like, these little, like, ridged bumps, and then there's, like, a, like, a pocket there, and then there's a metal bar. Um, and then there's, like, the, the bars and stuff that connect across the fold-out table. And my microphone stand is meant to clamp on... A desk. Like the plastic one. Yeah, it is a plastic table. And my microphone stand is meant to clamp on the, s the edge of a desk. But the problem there... Is there's... Because it's uneven... Like there's the, there's the, the low dip... At the first... I don't know how to describe this. This is, this is a nightmare. I, I should just like take a picture and show you guys. Um, because there's like the, the big low end of the table... And then it kind of like curves in and there's like a pocket and then there's like the metal bar, which is lower than the initial lip of the, or higher, it's higher up to the table. F 
fuck that. Okay, so basically it, it sloped on the inside and my microphone stand cannot find like a good place to clamp on at because it is a clamping microphone desk. And so it keeps falling off. And I fidgeted with the microphone stand too much this stream because it kept like sinking down. Draw it. That, that is something I could attempt to do. Hold on. Okay. So. The table, like, so say this is like the edge of the table. It goes down like this. And then there's like a ridge here. And it goes like this. And then there's like a metal bar here. But this metal bar is lower than the clamp. So while the clamp is meant to sit like this, the only part that the clamp can actually connect onto is right here. And so it ends up like tilting a bit this way, which makes it slide off of here. And so the microphone stand with all of its weight starts like slipping back more and more. So I have to continuously readjust it. I think I'm, I think I might just have to buy a different fucking microphone stand or something in the meantime. Maybe I can find one that just sits on the ground so I never have to deal with like table shenanigans ever again. I don't know. But it is, it is annoying as hell. So anyways. Oh, also here is, before stream I tried cutting out the, the Kadawa Shoujo outfit to use for stream, but it looked bad. Maybe I'll commission one to use for stream. Um... Right there. Bum, 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 bum. I could also maybe put, like, some putty there? Oh, I could put, like, I could put, like, that blue, uh, wall putty stuff there. Maybe that would work? Yeah, filling in the gaps. Hmm. Hmm. A little bit of wood? Uh, probably not a little bit of wood. It, I think it would be easier to just use like the, the, like, the, the putty stuff. But anyways, let's get some BGM going. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Hopefully this isn't super loud. Nope. Alrighty. I guess actually we can move. Never mind, we cannot move over here. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'll just make chat bigger. The putty won't be solid, but it should dry, right? Okay. Um. If you would like to watch more of the Kadawa Shoujo streams, just a reminder that the next part, part three, will be next week at Friday, 6 p.m. PST. That's 9 p.m. ET. Um, and every Kadawa Shoujo stream part after that will also be on that time. So same time as the first stream. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Not the ATF, thank you. I have the super... Some I have someone I, I have super someone every time I miss slash skip working out. This is for yesterday. Thank you. Hello, Bandetti. Thank you. It's times like this that I miss the BGM. Infernal Saxon. Thank you. Happy Leap Day. Mecha Pippa is the is in the paint booth. Ike the pirate. Thank you for the gift PP. Oh, uh, Francis. Thank you. It would make sense for someone planning to be an interpreter to go to a school with deaf students. Portal Gamer. Thank you. The rat sounds like it's going to be in the a uh, Kirsha tab. Colasa. Thank you. If I recall correctly, it was Suriko who was here last time. Back on noise. Thank you. Is the Pippa compound almost a reality? Bob Bobbyson, thank you. Lily, my beloved. Background noise, thank you. One shot KO. Eric Gemini, thank you. Going for a ham route. Uh, I'm not specifically set out on anybody's route other than I kind of want to go for Lily. But I would not be opposed to Lily, Hanako, or Rin. I think all three of those could be a really fun first route. Brandon, thank you. Can Ash Corp, thank you. Thank God Lily can't gaze upon how hideous that Baconator impersonator is. Truly really a girl after my own heart. What the hell? Mr. Yura, thank you. This is Rainbow Wizard Slander. Well, 
This rainbow wizard, rainbow wizard slander will not stand. He's beautiful. Is that the name of that painting? With the red hair? Hell, thank you. Someone please patch ESL Pippa into the game. Camera Weave, thank you. Cook Yuri is the best girl. Becca Noise, thank you. New title unlocked. Beast of Burden. Sume Shirel, thank you. Fun sad Pippa's ears to Misha since they're clearly the same person. Ahmed, thank you. Pipkin Pippa. True. Elios D, thank you. You managed to perfectly encapsulate how insufferable Misha is. The urge to put the drills out of her head grows. Thanks. Dead Maximum, thank you. Pippa, I missed you. Selena Nada, thank you. It's really cool when you play games like this, Pippi Pompernickel. Your normal voice is fitting of a cartoon bunny, and it's cool to hear your vocal and dramatic range. Thank thank you. I don't feel like I have much range, but I appreciate it. Aaron G, thank you. Shake her hand, Pippa. Well, that's it, thank you. She's a stormer, Pippa. Um, there's a little Japanese name I can't understand. Why does Rin sound like Nick Cage from Con Air? Oh, one of my... In terms of, like, vocal stuff... Um... One of my... Can I just say it bluntly? One, one time I auditioned to, we'll say, a bigger company than Face Connect. And in my audition, I used, uh... I used Bismarck from Azure Lane's face for it. And I I did the I did my best Lily voice the entire time. Like I tried to sound like really I tried to sound like really, really like uh like strong and 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 uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Which in hindsight, it's it's good that I did not get accepted because I don't know how long I would actually be able to keep that up for. Hung Liu, thank you. Lent her a hand, Pippa. Nick the Dick, thank you. YouTube hates tomboys. It's never been more over. Becca Noise, thank you. You've turned this school into a house of lies. I'm sure you could have pulled that off. Maybe. It's not, like, too bad. But the part that gets, I guess, a little bit difficult is, like... Like, I'm already using the, the lower part of my voice. So then, trying to, like emphasize things lower than that can turn into a bit of a strain, which happened there a few times. I think when I said the word no, it kind of turned into scraggly. But with some, with some practice, I can pull it off. Oh, crap, thank you. I'll do my best, Pippa. FBI. Uh, scumbag, thank you. If Darwin's on the origin of species is to be trusted in reference to ability, our adaptability. I already read that one. Nick the Dick, thank you. It's kind of like gang war, but they're all crips. Oh my god. Gamer Weed, thank you. She's Nay is worse girl, but Misha deserves to be comforted. I. Like, everyone sucks in high school, right? So, I, like, I'm not going to hold it against She's Nay too much, but. I definitely don't like her attitude. I, I definitely do not like her attitude. It makes me very uncomfortable how she is willing to treat Hanako poorly due to her association with Lily. And maybe this is going to sound like a little bit too soft, but I feel like especially when Lily seems to be an especially vulnerable person. Or not Lily, uh, Hanako seems to be an especially vulnerable person with how sensitive she is. It, it, it feels... It's, it's a step too far. It's, it's a step too far for, like, I, I feel like, I feel like if, like, she's not treated like Rin like that, right? It, it's not, like, it's still wrong, but it's... Like, Rin can handle it a bit better, whereas Hanako clearly has extreme problems with how other people perceive her. And so for she's in a to single her out like that is going to hit her even stronger than we can't handle anything. Shut up. It's... Rin wouldn't give a fuck? Yeah. Ah! She's nice. She's nice. She's nice a little fucked up. Hanako was ditching a lot of classes? Yeah, but that's not she's an A's responsibility. That's this is like this is like hall monitor shit, right? Where it's like if the teachers are allowing Hanako 
to skip class. That's the teacher's. And it's the teacher's responsibility to deal with that situation. Shizune might be president of the student council, but she's not in charge of individual students to that degree, right? She might be like, okay, you're in the hall instead of in the classroom. Here's like a referral slip or whatever. Here's like a, a tardy strip, whatever the fuck, right? But she does not have complete dominion over all the students and all of their actions. Shizne loves her broom. Shizne loves her broom a little bit too much. Does it work differently in Japan? I don't know. A tardy strip? Or a tardy slip? What are they called? The strip of paper that you get when you... When you're out in the halls and you shouldn't be. Uh, background noise, thank you. She's the type Kenji was warning you about, true. It's Japan, it's different. You're told off in Japan for it? Mm. It still feels like it's the teacher's responsibility. And Shizune should handle the situation with more grace than she does. That's my perspective. Even if it's even if it's Japanese culture, I disagree with it. Synapse, thank you. 12 years later into 2024, Shizune has proven to be an exceptional HOA administrator. James, James, and thank you. The writing is so realistic. Lola Taylor, thank you. Being physically disabled with autism and ADD, I was in front of a lot of adaptive classes and a few special needs classes. It was mostly just kids with Down syndrome, but they were the most polite classmates ever. The students have a lot more responsibility in Japan. Shizune is doing what a class rep should. I think it's... I think it's morally wrong. I think... Shizune ostracizing... Uh, Hanako is completely inappropriate and treating her with contempt due to... Most likely, anyways, her personal issue with Lily, like, it's, that's just, that's just not appropriate. I feel like positions of power, you need to act with grace and you need to serve the people, not control the people, right? I don't... I, I think if you become student class president, or not class, a uh, student council president, because you want to control people or you want control of situations, I don't think you should have that power. Right? The old saying people who want power should not have power. Because you get people like she's next. <laughs> As a Romaniac, thank you. We just need a dwarf girl riding a giant hunchback girl and we can have rule 64 master blaster. As Lars, thank you. One word at a time. But away. Manga Bingo Tango Mango, thank you. Please be patient. Misha is ASLSL. Becker Noise, thank you. There's a little bit of Pippa in all of them. Becker Noise, thank you. Pippa's imaginings always take the darkest turn. Becker Noise, thank you. Pippa are the one. Uh, Stemwinder, thank you. Two Face Waifu Edition. Oh, oh Francis, thank you. I might be in the minority, but I like Chizne, second best girl off the rim. Her route explains so much about her and Misha. Well, I might have to give it a try. Even even if somebody's ex somebody's behavior might be explainable, right? But I don't believe people's behavior can ever truly be excusable, right? Because we're all responsible for our own for our own actions. You know? Even if, even if Shizune has a reason to act the way that she does, I don't, I don't think that behavior is appropriate regardless of the situation. Uh, background noise, thank you. Needs one of those big captain of industry desks. Norad Clips, thank you. Contrary to a previous super chat, your voice is very nice. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, let's see the stragglers. That's it, thank you. Mounting tape, four bucks at Walmart. Korga, wait, mounting tape. I will look into that. Korga, thank you. Same Pippa time, same Pippa channel. Chloe Shelving, thank you. Your choices for the main girls' voices are great. Thank you, thank you. Our brown bar, thank you. If this is a school for disabled students, is it okay to call them tardy? No! Oh, wait, wait, well, I mean, if they're tardy to class. Oh, fuck off. Skin casually, thank you. From now on, guys, remember, Pippa's not late. She's tardy. 
Space guy Ryan and you. She's the Yelp reviews win. Oh god, you just know they'd be so bitter. You know they'd be so bitter and hateful. God. Wait, how late was I to stream? Was I like 10 minutes late to stream? Oh no, stream cut out for a moment. Okay, I see. I'm like, why why is there it's already nine. I was like five minutes late to stream, right? So why is there Oh wait, no, that does check out. Wait, yeah, never mind, I'm dumb. I chat, I don't know how to math good. I don't know how to math good. You were about seven minutes late. Ah, I'm sorry. I don't have any good reasons. <laughs> All right. Math hard. Math is hard. I am going to pop out. I will see you guys tomorrow for Old School RuneScape at 4 p.m.? Question mark? Benny McDonald, thank you. I can't believe you accidentally threw away your stinky old hoodie. I hope Fish has a spare. It's... it's somewhere. It's on my phone. I can, I can move it over. Um, friendly reminder, today is the last day to buy the Valentine's merch in the shop at shop.face-connect.com. But if you'd like to save your pennies a bit, remember, March 3rd, there's going to be birthday merch drop. And it will be my birthday! Da -da -da -da! It's a off day, so my stream time is a little bit later than usual. Because I did not remember <laughs> everything that was planned. But... I'm hanging out with family that day, so I will be I will be a little bit late to that stream, but yeah. We'll all we'll all hang out, chat. We'll all hang out. And uh maybe I'll do like a birthday part two or something on on Tuesday. Like a proper I'm not gonna call it birthday stream too, but I'll call it like community hangout or something. Or a party. Well they're all party! I don't know. All right, I'm popping out, Mister. I think you. I missed what that said. Hold on. Um, two birthdays, not two birthdays, but like a party day. Um, where the hell did that go? Where the hell did that super chat go? Mister, I think you buy the voice pack for the electrician experience. It's... Alrighty, I am going to end off. Thank you guys so much for popping in. Uh, I will be reading... How do I show you part three? So that way you guys can bookmark it. You can set the notification on it. And if you enjoy this stream, you'll be able to know when the next one is. Dun -dun 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 -dun! I hope you guys have a nice day. Don't forget to set a reminder for the next Kadawa Shoujo stream! And old so cringe! Till the fubbles away, till the... 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 <laughs>